Skyblock, my beloved. With the new updates, there are many things that you can do with this small little island. For this video, I'm going to assume that most of you guys already know the basics of Skyblock, how you live, how you survive, how people used to survive before the new updates. I'm going to update you on the way you can survive with the new updates. So you all know the basics. You start off with the cobblestone generator, cut down your tree, wait for saplings, make sure you have enough saplings, make sure you don't lose any dirt, all that stuff. But one of the first things that I would do as soon as I could was make a composter. Composters are a tool that you can use to make bone meal. You make the bone meal by putting things like saplings in it. So if you don't want to wait until you make a mob farm in order to get things like seeds for wheat, just make a composter, put in a bunch of saplings that you have to spare, and just get a bone meal, place it on the ground, and break the seeds. And hopefully, you'll get one that's able to be planted. This step isn't exactly necessary, but it is something you can do with the new update. Once you actually get a bone meal, instead of having to go to the nether to get a second water source, just bone meal the water. Just like that. Boom. Infinite water source. Once this has been lit up, you're gonna encounter something strange on the other side. And the strange thing is this. Because Skyblock is so old, the orientation of the portal has changed and has become unstable. It is possible to trap yourself in here if you update these blocks. And if you're playing on hardcore like I did, you don't want this to happen. So it's an awkward situation, but you actually should remake your portal right away using the lava. Hey, The nether in Skyblock is a lot more useful than it used to be. Before, you just had this island, which you can maybe use to make a gold farm, but for what purpose? What did you truly need the gold farm for? Become rich with golden tools? Perhaps. But, in the new updates, 1.16 especially, they added a thing called a piglin. Piglins can trade many different items with you for gold. And since pigmen and piglins don't have anywhere else to spawn because it's literally just void, you can make the simplest of farms to spawn them in. <laughs> so what you can do is after you set up your gold farm, catch a piglin with hay bales. This allows you to do many different things, but most notably, it allows you to duplicate your dirt supply. And on top of that, it's also a good source of iron because they trade nuggets. Forgot to mention that one. And there we go. That's what we're looking for. Gravel. If you take two dirt and two gravel, you get four coarse dirt. And if you use a hoe on coarse dirt, it turns into regular dirt. And the more gravel you get, the more dirt you can get back. Now I have eight. Now, many Skybox players will think that you can't get villagers, but this is not true. The reason one might think this is because you can't really get brewing stands here, can you? And you need weakness potions in order to cure the villagers. But there actually is another way, and it's done with these. Of course, gonna want your zombie villager, but next, you're gonna want a witch. You can, of course, get both of these if you have an XP grinder where the mobs survive if they land. If you're close enough to a witch, they have a chance to splash you with weakness potions. Just like that. Just make sure you don't die in the process. As soon as you manage to get your first piece of iron by killing a zombie or trading with piglins, the first thing I would make with it is a stone cutter. This tool allows you to save on resources. For example, if you want to make stairs out of a stack of cobblestone, you use 60 and only get 40 in return. But if you use it with a stone cutter, you get all 64. I would also make a smithing table, which only takes about two iron. Smithing tables can be used with your new villager. Now, either fortunately or unfortunately, you're gonna need two villagers for this next step. One of them has to be a farmer. If you have a wheat farm, make your villager trade wheat for emeralds. Then you can give this to this toolsmith to unlock his trades. This process will continuously unlock more and more trades, but eventually you can get down into the range where he will give you enchanted tools, starting with iron. And there's a diamond hoe there too, which is pretty cool. And now you have access to diamond tools with no access to diamonds. And unfortunately, unlike gold and iron, you cannot smelt down diamond armor or tools to give you diamonds back. Now, if you make a blast furnace, which takes five iron, you can make an armor smith or an armorer. And like before, now you have access to armor that you previously probably didn't have access to, even chainmail armor. Eventually, like the toolsmith, the armor will give you diamond armor, and at the final stage, he gives you the entire set. So now you can have full enchanted diamond armor on Skyblock. Who knew? And once again, you can also repeat this process for weaponsmiths, which I created using a grindstone. 
And of course, with villagers, you can make yourself an iron farm. Now, if there's enough room on your island, you can actually spawn these guys in, and they will give you access to things that you normally couldn't get. Some of these include different types of saplings. And another very important one is pointed dripstone. If you have a setup exactly like this, you can put your lava source up here, and eventually, you can duplicate your lava source. So not only do you have infinite water, but you can also get infinite lava as well. Now, there is one more thing you can do, but this all really depends on how you like to play the game. Skyblock was made before a time that void worlds could be generated, so the creator had to manually cut out a whole bunch of land themselves, which allows you to do something like this. At around 700 in any direction from the main island, you reach where the world actually begins to generate as normal, and eventually you can find yourself a nether fortress. And of course, using another fortress, you can kill blazes for blaze rods, which you can then use to beat the game. You can also use that nether to get netherite armor, as I did in my playthrough. The same goes for the overworld, by the way. The overworld is just as accessible as the nether is. Now, in my playthrough, the only reason I came out here at all was to go and beat the ender dragon, and that was it. Newer skyblock maps probably won't have that issue, but if you're playing on the classic skyblock as I have, you can take it or leave it. But there you have it. I can't really think of any more off the top of my head to tell you guys right now. Those are most of the tips that I can give you for newer versions of Minecraft on how to play Skyblock.